Hey guys, so this video I wanted to go over some common guard retention mistakes I see people making, which is gonna be focused on the angle of your hip and also using your inside arm to frame. Before I get into the details, if you guys like the content, please like the video, it helps a lot in promoting. All right, let's go. Um, so first thing we'll talk about, um, if you've seen my other videos, uh, guard retention details you need to know, uh, and some of my other guard retention stuff, I'll put some links in the description to check it out. Uh, I've talked a lot before about using your outside leg to recompose and the importance of centering. Uh, so in this video, I wanna talk about the idea of the importance of the angle of your hip, right? So if my opponent is like right here uh, trying to pass, it's important I use my outside leg to try to recenter. And that could be, he maybe he's on my pants and I recenter this way. Maybe I have to go on his leg, but I'm usually trying to use this outside leg to recompose. Because if I try to use the inside leg too much, I often open this elbow knee space, which allows him to go in for a pass, right? So stand just a little bit closer, right? With the, uh, this leg back, right? So we're here, right? So I'm trying to use this outside leg. But one common problem people have is that they're very center when they start. So if the guy is over here like this and my hip is angled the wrong way, just a little bit like this, it's really hard to use this leg. It takes a lot more mobility for your hip. So this small little subtle movement here of just angling your hip this way makes it so much easier. Like I don't have to use any mobility. My leg is in a straight line to recompose. This is such a simple mistake, but I see so many people trying to do all these common guard retention things like framing your hip, lassoing your leg, recentering, all of this stuff. But what happens is the guy looks like this. So look, we'll have you go on this side, right? So maybe the guy's doing like a Toriando pass. He's got both pants and he walks over here like this, right? So when he walks over here, go ahead and hold the pants, right? I wanna put this foot in the bicep and I might even frame my hip to help support. But if I look like this, it's hard to get that foot, right? So what I wanna do is right as I feel him starting to go to one side, like if he's going, oh, you're fine, you're fine. If I feel him starting to go to the side, like on the right here, I just wanna angle my hip in like this. I just do this little hop jump where I kind of turn my hip over, you can let go real quick, where I just kind of turn my hip over and do this and it's gonna make it so much easier to get the foot in, right? So he's here like this, right? I just angle the hip, I go here. If he's, on a Toriando, often what he's trying to do is to drive this top leg so hard that my hips get turned the opposite direction, right? So if he starts pushing there like that, then it's hard to do it, right? That's why that hand support on the floor, like I use like this, I'm just doing it on the other side, helps so much. But it's possible I can do this hand frame, but not try to swivel my hip like this. And then what happens is, go ahead and do the Toriando, is I look like this and I still can't get that in. So you need not only the support on your hip with the uh, outside arm, right, but also that hip swivel. So when I'm here and I feel I'm starting to go this way, go that way, see I do that little hip swivel. Now I can frame, I get the outside foot on the bicep, and now I can start centering up. Okay, so another big detail with recentering is the importance of this inside arm, okay? So it's possible you use the outside leg, you use the hip swivel and all of that, but if you're really lazy with this right arm, he's trying to come at me, I have to frame, right? So I wanna recenter. So I can recenter using this outside leg or this inside arm. So if we're here like this and I have this hand here, that allows me to center, right? So if he's grabbing my pants and trying to do a Toriando, for example, if I frame here, notice I frame, but I also, I don't want to expose this. If I expose this, his knee can come into knee on belly or he can drop in chest to chest and I start to get in trouble, right? So I want to frame here like this. Now that blocks there, I swivel my hip, I get the foot in the bicep and I center up. Now he tries to go the other way, right? Boom, I frame the hip, block here, knee tight, foot in the bicep and I center up, okay? Um, so some of those small details like that, you know, you can train for years and focus on all these things, but usually like details make all the difference, right? It's just like in engineering, like if you see like a rocket ship, they can design it perfectly, but one little mistake with like, you know, the screws they have, they didn't account for like the temperature and expand it, it can blow up the rocket ship. So a lot of things like that in jiu-jitsu people, it's not just hard work, it's uh, detail oriented work. You really have to dig deep on these details. Okay guys, um, if you guys have any guard retention questions, uh, please comment and let me know. Uh, also, if you guys have any other technique questions or nothing to do with guard retention, please send me your request. Thanks a lot.